Yo, 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 what's up guys? Hope all is well. Welcome to another PC build. Today we're working with the budget of 500 bucks. Total cost of this build came out to 545 USD. And this build is aimed at people that want to play Fortnite and Valorant at competitive FPS. I'm talking 144 FPS. It'll also play other titles as well, of course. But mainly, if you're looking to just play esport titles that aren't crazy demanding, like this is the build for you. It's going to get you in the door at a great price point. Anyways, guys, we're going to break this video down into three parts. First, we're going to be going over all the parts we're using for this build and their prices and I'm going to show you guys how to build it step by step. I'm going to be with you the whole way through. Second, we're then going to install Windows 10 and any necessary drivers we need for our build and at the very end, we're going to be putting it to the test against popular titles. So stay tuned for the end because that's always fun. Let's jump into it. How we're going to make this happen at such a low price point is our Ryzen 5 right here. We went with AMD's Ryzen 5 5600G. It's a six core CPU, but it has integrated Radeon graphics. Gaming performance is legit and I can't wait to show you guys at the end of this video. This ran us $267 right now on Amazon. Now moving on to our motherboard choice, we're gonna be rocking a gigabyte motherboard with a B550 chipset. This is the micro ATX form factor. It was hundred bucks, four RAM slots, eight USB ports. That's a lot for this type of board, cool. So a micro ATX board calls for a micro ATX case. This is Cooler Masters budget $50 case. Originally, it was all black. We spray painted it red, made it a bit more exciting. The juice that we're gonna be running is bronze rated juice by EVGA, 610 watts. This is EVGA's BP, and this ran us 40 bucks right here. So because this power supply is bronze rated, it's gonna last us, you know? You don't wanna cheap out on the power supply because if this dies, it could kill other components along with it. So we're covered here. 610 watts is also enough to upgrade to a future graphics card, which you definitely are gonna wanna do with this build. I mean, this build is meant to be upgraded in the future. So for our RAM, we chose 16 gigabytes. It's rated at 3200 megahertz, and this is XPG's gaming E45 RAM. It's in the black colorway. It's gonna blend in. This RAM was only $53, it's a good price. For our storage, this is very little storage. I mean, we only have 250 gigs here. Of course, if you need more, upgrade by higher capacity. But this is Crucial's M.2 SSD, and this is where we're gonna be running everything from, 35 bucks. We're gonna jump into it as soon as we go over our Funko Pop. Spider Pump, red, it's gonna match our red case. And that's it, guys, only six parts for this build. We're gonna fly through this really quickly because it's a very simple build, guys. First, we're gonna be working with our motherboard and our CPU. So let's get this guy open. It comes included with a stock AMD heatsink. Okay, so first we're gonna wanna get the lever to the side and all the way up. Now, if we take a closer look at our CPU, there's gonna be a golden arrow on the bottom left-hand side of it. And on our CPU socket on our board, there's an arrow on the top left-hand side. So we're gonna line up the arrow of the CPU with the arrow on the CPU socket, and then we're gonna just drop it into place. It should fall right in. It did not, that's okay, let's try again. But we definitely don't wanna push down because we could bend our pins and that's gonna damage our CPU. We don't want that, so just hover it over and it went in. So let's put the lever back down, tuck it in, there you go. Now we have to install our cooler. So the stock AMD cooler already has thermal paste pre-applied, so no need to worry about that. Be careful not to smudge the paste on it though, and we're gonna now remove these. All right, so we're gonna line up all points of the heatsink, four points on our board. So I'm just lining it up, and there we go. So I'm gonna be screwing in opposite ends. So get this one attached a little bit. Moving on to the opposite one, get that attached a bit. And the last one. All right, cool, they're all attached now. So let's go ahead and finish off all of them. It's not gonna let us over tighten, guys. Just keep going with your screwdriver. And once it stops, it's good to go. Now the same for the remaining three. Done. Now we gotta connect the fan to the motherboard. Right here, guys, labeled CPU fan. Done. So moving on to the RAM. We're always using Corsair, you know, so cool change finally. Okay, so the second slot, let's put both of the levers back and the fourth slot, same thing. We're doing that so our RAM could run in dual channel. The RAM only goes in one way. So we got the indent of the RAM lined up correctly on the board. Let's put it into place. And now we push down with equal force. Both levers clip back up. And same thing for the second stick. Get it in there and equal force with the thumbs. Done. There's some clean looking RAM. It's really simple. Storage time, guys. So we want to get our little M.2 in one of our M.2 slots. We're going to put it in this one and the screw's already there. So you're going to want to take it out. Put in our M.2. There it is. Now it's time to get our motherboard inside our case. So first thing we want to do is we want to get the IO shield from our motherboard box. So line it up correctly like this. And there you go, it's in. 
All right, next thing we want to do before we get our board in here is we want to make sure that all the motherboard standoffs inside our case are where we want them. And we actually need to add some. So let's do that right now. So if we take a look at our micro ATX board, we have three points on top, three points in the middle and two points on the bottom. The standoffs we need to add are included with our case. It also comes with this standoff tool. So we're gonna get a standoff, put it in here and then secure it with a screwdriver. So two standoffs are already included right here and right here. We need to add one right here, one right here, one right here, 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 and here. So we're adding six standoffs total. Even if you're asking, even, even if you're asking, cause I do what I do. Now we're ready to put in our board. Get our board in here. I'm gonna line up the ports first into the IO shield. And now I'm gonna lay it down. And line it up with the standoffs. Now I'm gonna secure all the points with the screws that came with the case. Motherboard's in, it's got our power supply out now. Okay, so for this case, we wanna secure our power supply by first removing this. Once these screws are off, then this little cage comes out. Now we're gonna secure our power supply to this. So we want the fan of our unit to be facing down and secure it with the screws that came with the power supply. To make it easier on ourselves, we're just gonna pick it up and line up the four points. It should look something like this, guys. So I'm gonna do the other three points now. Okay, our finished product. So let's put it into our case, fan facing down, and we're gonna secure the bracket to the case. Okay guys, so we have everything secure inside our case now. Next, what we're gonna do is start connecting cables. So we're gonna have two sets of cables, power supply cables, and on the back, the case cables. So the case cables are to connect our ports, like our power button and USB ports, audio, and of course our power supply to power. Wired everything to the back. So let's start it off with our case cable. First, our USB 3.0 cable is gonna go right here. It only goes in one way. Make sure you line it up straight and then push it. That one has pins and we don't wanna bend them. Now our HD audio cable hooks up right here. Also only goes in one way. So the HD audio text is gonna be facing down. Last case cable is our little JFP1 cables which connect right here. So first our power LED cable, we want the plus on the left. And we're gonna hook both of them up to the first top left pins like that. For our HDD LED cable, if we turn it around, there's a little arrow. So we want the arrow on the left-hand side and that's gonna go right underneath the cable we just plugged in. So there it is on the bottom two pins. So now again on the bottom, our reset switch goes right next to it, but this, it doesn't matter what way you plug it in. And right on top of it, our power switch, again, it doesn't matter what way you plug it in. There you go, JFP1 is done. So now moving on to our power supply cables, we're almost done guys. So right here is where our CPU power cable is gonna hook up. And then we're gonna be hooking up the big 24 pin power cable right here. So we wanna make sure we connect our 24 pin power cable like that. And we want this clip to clip back here guys. All right, so I lined it up and I'm gonna push in until it clips. There it is. Next up here, our CPU. So you can't miss this cable because it's labeled CPU. And again, we want these things to clip up here on the top. So there we go. We got our clips on top and we made sure that we plugged it all the way in. So now we're gonna connect our case fan to our motherboard. It's gonna go right here, system fan. So we plugged it in. Now I'm gonna tuck in the cable. There we go. All right, guys, can you believe it? We're done. Good job if you're following along. This was a super quick build. Now we're gonna be throwing in our Funko Pop in there and I'm gonna install some RGB lighting. Whoa, <laughs> he looks dope, guys. We're just gonna put him on top of the power supply. Yeah, it looks good right there. All right, guys, time for the first boot up. And here we go. Let's go ahead and give this a little wiggle. And he's rocking out. Awesome, guys, good job, we did it. This was a super simple, clean, easy build. And it came out so good, it's beautiful. So now we're gonna install everything on here. If you haven't turned on bell notifications for the channel yet, be sure to do so so you can be alerted for the future builds and other projects we're gonna be working on that are gonna drop here on this channel. All right, guys, let's install stuff. And, and there's Spider-Man. Oh. 
All right, guys, so we're gonna be going over four things. First, we're gonna be installing Windows 10 from a USB flash drive. Second, we're gonna be installing drivers. Third, we're gonna install a game. And then last, we're gonna make sure our RAM is running at its rated speed because by default it's not, and we wanna get our money's worth. First, we're gonna plug in our USB flash drive. I made a video on how to create one of these. It's linked in the video description, or you can buy a Windows 10 USB drive from Best Buy. So I plugged it in and turned on our system. I'm gonna select custom. If we had more SSD drives hooked up to our system, they would all pop up right here. We only have one, so we know what we're picking. That's where we're installing Windows. So it's copying all the files from our USB flash drive to our SSD, and then our system's gonna restart. Once our system restarts and we get to this screen, we can now unhook our flash drive. All the files have been copied over. So AMD's drivers have stopped me from recording right now. I'm gonna use my phone camera. So we're on AMD's website, and we're gonna be installing our Ryzen 5 5600G driver. I selected Windows 10, and I'm gonna be downloading the 21.10.2 recommended download. So every website we're visiting in this video will be linked in the video's description. And it went to our downloads folder. Let's open it up. So we're installing the Radeon graphics driver, install. Done. And there it is. Our Radeon graphics driver for our 5600G is ready to go. So now we're on our motherboard's website, selecting Windows 10. We're gonna be downloading the audio driver. For chipset, nothing. For LAN, that's how I'm connected to the internet, by the way, guys, through an ethernet cable downloaded that and under utility we're going to download rgb fusion this is the program that lets us customize our lighting inside our case okay so here they are we can't install them yet we have to extract all the folders first so once we extracted all of them by right clicking and clicking extract we now don't need this anymore here are the unzipped ones and now we're going to install all of them All our drivers are installed now. Time to get a game. We're gonna use Steam as the example, one of the many clients on PC. So we're in my Steam library right now and let's install Siege. Now we're downloading Siege and it's 81 gigs. So I'm definitely gonna have to download it, play it, uninstall it, and then download some more games because this is a small drive we're rocking right now, guys. So now we're gonna make sure our RAM is running at its rated speed. So we're gonna restart our computer. And when it's restarting, we're gonna keep pressing delete on our keyboard. All right, there we are. Okay, so we're gonna head over to advanced mode. We're gonna go to tweaker, we're already there. And we're going to go down to extreme memory profile. And we're gonna select disabled and we're gonna select profile one. So as you can see, our RAM is now gonna be running at 3200 megahertz, what it's rated for. Before, it was only running at 2600 megahertz. So let's go to save and exit. Yes, and our RAM is running at 2400 megahertz still. I know what's gonna fix it. We're gonna update the BIOS, that's gonna do the trick. So we're back at the motherboard's website, those 10, and we're gonna select BIOS. Let's scroll all the way up, and we're gonna be installing the newest version of the BIOS, F14, download. All right, let's open this up, get it over to our desktop. We don't need this anymore, this is installed. And again, we have to extract it. Here's the extracted BIOS. So now we're gonna hook up an empty USB flash drive to our system. So here's our empty USB flash drive. And we're gonna drag over our BIOS file, which is F14, to the flash drive. Now let's restart our system and boot up to our BIOS again. Delete. We're back in our BIOS and we're gonna go over to Q flash right here, bottom right. And as you can see, we have the BIOS version F10 installed. So let's click update BIOS and it's going to automatically detect our USB flash drive and here's our F14 BIOS. You sure you want to update? Yes. And now I'm gonna press this to start. When our BIOS is being updated, guys, you wanna make sure your system does not lose power because if it does, it's gonna corrupt the BIOS and then it's gonna be annoying to have to fix that. It's gonna render your system useless till you fix it. So make sure your system does not lose power right now. All right, guys, moment of truth, advanced mode, tweaker, extreme memory profile, profile one, save and exit, yes. All right, let's check. Oh, here we go, the anticipation. Hey! When it comes to issues with your system, updating the BIOS tends to fix the problem. No biggie though, it's easy. All right, guys, so finally done, let's frag. So we're gonna be playing Siege at 1600 by 900 resolution, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, and a 90 FOV graphics settings. Here they are. So for 900p, the resolution we're playing Siege at right now doesn't look that bad. It looks pretty good, actually. I mean, I can see what's going on at 90 FOV. Of course, I would love a lot more FPS, like 144 FPS, but 60 is, of course, playable. No worries. Oh! Oh! 
no! I'm gonna blast someone back to Narnia, guys. Oh. Oh! Alright, now's the time! Oh! We got one, guys. Let's do a ninja. What? <laughs> what? Interesting. I learned a little bit of siege. Yo, this guy's right on top of me, bro. Teammate. He's up there, teammate. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be playing Halo 3 at 720p resolution, and here are the graphic settings. Yo, we're getting 190. Oh, ghost battle. We're getting 170 FPS right now. Very good, very good. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. Get him. Yeah! Uh oh. <laughs> oh! Get on the mongoose. <laughs> Get on my mom. Shut up, I'm talking. No. I'm gonna forgive him. See, that's why I love Halo 3. It's just a social match. I had a pretty good time. So for Valorant, we're gonna be playing at 1080p, and here are the graphic settings. Here we go, guys. Let's win this Valorant death match. All right, guys, GTA 5 time. We're playing the game at 1080p resolution, and then we're going to try another res later on. Here are the settings. All right, let's get up close and personal. Dr. has arrived. Well, that's the performance at 1080p. Let's go ahead and turn it down to 900p now. All right, 900p definitely, definitely gets us higher frames. Let me get on that turret, man. Yo, <laughs> I've never used one of these in GTA. Yo, what? Oh, snap. All right, well, GTA's performance is playable. All right, guys, we're playing Fortnite then now. We're playing Cupid's Crossfire is what it's called. And we're gonna test out a lot of different settings. Right now we're playing it on performance mode, native 1080p resolution, we're getting 100. Yes, this game mode looks like rainbow vomit. Oh, that was a nice shot. All right, we're gonna try some new settings. We're still gonna play at 1080p res, but now we're gonna turn down the 3D resolution to 80%. Our goal is to get 144 FPS. There we go. It's above it for the 144 hertz monitors. Easy. That was a trade, huh? So next, 100% resolution scale and 900p. So this performance is very similar to 1080p at 80% resolution scale. Oh, we're popping up. Nice. Ooh, we're on a roll. We'll try 720p, why not? Okay, 720p gets you a lot of FPS. Right on target. Oh, I missed the banana up close and just hit by someone across the map. Oh, we won. All right, next game. So our war zone settings, 1080p, but we turned down the render resolution to 66. For more FPS, here are the quality settings. Boom. Oh, crap. Yikes. Juicy match. That was close. All right, guys, that's a wrap. I had a lot of fun testing on our rig. Thanks for all you guys' support. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. <laughs>